the Nahushtan, the Bronze Serpent, its origins and fate. Following their deliverance from Egypt, the people began to complain to God about the conditions of their lives, and as a direct response, God dispersed among them fiery serpents. Many of the people ended up passing away, and many more were dying. Numbers 21, 4 to 9, New American Standard Bible. Then they set out from the Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient because of the journey. So the people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we are disgusted with this miserable food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Intercede with the Lord that he will remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and put it on a flagpole, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten and looks at it will live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on the flagpole, and it came about that if a serpent bit someone and he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The difficult trek that was designed to bypass the hostile Edom frustrated the Israelites, and as a result, they reverted to their favorite complaint against God and Moses. Why have you led us up from Egypt to die in the wilderness? For forty years God had preserved them. They were protected by God for a period of forty years. It would be inappropriate at this moment to presume the worst about him. So since they were determined to complain about dying, God gave them something to actually complain about. He sent poisonous snakes. The carpet viper is a highly poisonous viper known from Africa and the Middle East, thus a likely candidate. Other suggestions include the puff adder and sand viper, neither of which is as lethal as the carpet viper. Even among miracles, this was unusual. There was no immediate logical connection between merely glancing at a serpent mounted on a pole and the ability to live, or refusing to look and dying. But God commanded that such an unusual thing be used to bring salvation to Israel. This is interesting, as we see in Genesis and Revelation, the serpent is frequently employed as a symbol of evil throughout the Bible. Many years later, something strange happened. In the time between Moses and Hezekiah, the Israelites began worshipping the fiery serpent, Moses made out of bronze, 2 Kings 18.4. This shows us how easy it is for us to take the things of God and twist them into idol tree. Although the bronze serpent was referenced in relation to Hezekiah's reforms, it is possible that the worship of Nehushtan had been occurring prior to his reign. When Hezekiah took power, Judah was almost completely ruled by Assyria. His reign was one of great reform. He led a campaign against all kinds of idol tree, destroying even the high places and the bronze serpent from Numbers 21. He gave it the name Nehushtan, which means a bronze thing in Hebrew. Hezekiah was the best king of Judah because he put his trust in the Lord God more than any other king. 2 Kings 18.4 Amplified Bible He removed the high places of pagan worship, broke down the images, memorial stones, and cut down the Asherim. He also crushed the pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the Israelites had burned incense to it, and it was called Nehushtan, a bronze sculpture. Even though it is easy to see how something that brought miraculous healing could become an object of worship, it was still blatant disobedience to God's commands. The bronze serpent was God's method of deliverance during the incident recorded in number 21. 
There is not the slightest hint that God ever intended for it to have any further application. It's interesting to note that the literal translation of the word Nehushtan is piece of brass. It's possible that Hezekiah gave it the name Nehushtan so that people would be reminded that it was just a piece of brass. It did not contain any power at all. Even in the situation described in Numbers 21, it was God who brought about healing, not Nehushtan. A powerful lesson for all of us to learn from Nehushtan is that even good things and good people have the potential to become idols in our lives. All of our adoration, praise and thanksgiving should be directed solely towards God. Nothing else, regardless of its amazing history, is worthy. Jesus indicated that this bronze serpent was a foreshadowing of him. The serpent, a symbol of sin and judgment, was lifted up from the earth and put on a tree, which was a symbol of a curse. The raised and cursed serpent was a picture of Jesus, who takes away sin from anyone who looks to him in faith, just like the Israelites had to look to the symbol in the desert. God saved the people by sending the bronze snake. There's no sign that God ever planned for it to be used again. Number 2. Golden Calf The Golden Calf This idol is strange as it was created by a man that was a righteous spiritual leader. In Exodus 32, there was an unusual event that happened after the Israelites escaped from Egypt. According to the Bible, God miraculously parted the Red Sea, allowing the Israelites to pass through while the Egyptians were pursuing them. Once the Israelites had safely crossed the other side, God caused the sea to close back up, drowning the pursuing Egyptians. During Moses' absence on Mount Sinai, retrieving the Ten Commandments, the Israelites committed an action that is commonly seen in the Old Testament. They became irritated. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up from Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Exodus 32, 1 Moses was on the mountain for a long time, receiving instructions from the Lord. Forty days and forty nights, in fact. That was apparently too long for the Israelites. They were tired of waiting and were impatient. They despised the one whom God used to deliver them from slavery. This Moses, we don't know what happened to him. They also demanded that Aaron create an idol to lead them in Moses' and the Lord's place a rejection of the first two commandments and a repudiation of their vow to obey the Lord. Exodus 32, 2-4, New American Standard Bible. Aaron said to them, Tear off the gold rings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people tore off the gold rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then he took the gold from their hands and fashioned it, with an engraving tool made it into a cast metal calf. And they said, This is your God, Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Tragically, Aaron listened to them and told them to bring him gold, which he fashioned into the image of a calf. This decision holds significance as the Egyptians and Canaanites, who were the initial occupants of the land promised to Israel, worshipped calf-shaped deities. As a result, Israel scorned the great I Am who had rescued them and instead worshipped a false god of the nations. The praise that was due to God alone was bestowed upon a gold statue. Exodus 32, 5-6 Now when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. So the next day they got up early and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and got up to engage in lewd behavior. Aaron declared that they would hold a festival to the Lord and the people brought burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. It's important to remember that the people performing sacrifices to this idol referred to it as 
the Lord, despite the fact that the true Lord had prescribed different practices. Religious synthesis always leads to false religion. When idolatry is mixed with Christianity, Christianity is no longer the same. People sat down to eat and drink before getting up to party. They were clearly not having a harmless celebration. Its foundation was rejection of the true God, and the party most likely incorporated corrupt cultic practices from other nations, such as drunkenness and immorality. Paul quotes this verse when he warns the Corinthians, Don't become idolaters. Moses had been on the mountain for days in God's presence and was completely unaware of what was going on. God informed Moses that Moses' people, notice he did not say my people, had acted corruptly and had quickly abandoned God in favor of idol worship. The Lord declared that they were a stiff-necked people who would be destroyed. After all, he would be able to turn Moses into a great nation instead. Moses didn't want to become the patriarch of a new nation without the Israelites. Instead, he pleaded with God to spare them from destruction. He didn't make the appeal based on their worthiness, but on God's reputation and character. Moses descended the mountain carrying the two tablets inscribed with God's writing. While Joshua was on the mountain with Moses, he heard commotion coming from the Israelite camp and mistakenly thought an enemy invasion caused it. But Moses was wiser. Moses was filled with anger when he witnessed the people dancing around the calf. This led him to break the tablets in disappointment as Israel had broken the covenant made by God with them in a short span of time. The Israelites were made to drink the powder of a burnt calf, which was a consequence of their sin. Exodus 32, 21-24 Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you, that you have brought such a great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. For they said to me, Make a God for us who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. So I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them tear it off. Then they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Moses had a confrontation with his brother Aaron, who was tasked with leading Israel to know and obey God. However, Aaron led them into committing a serious sin. Instead of taking responsibility for his actions, Aaron shifted the blame to the people, as if they coerced him into it. Then he made this absurd claim. When I threw the gold into the fire, this calf came out. As a result, he falsely implied that the idol was created supernaturally. Moses recognized that the people were out of control. Despite the fact that he had confronted them with their sin, many remained unrepentant. So he exclaimed, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. When the Levites gathered around him in response, Moses dispatched them to carry out God's judgment on those who continued to practice idolatry and immorality. As a result, 3,000 men were killed within a short period of time. Sin is no joke. It brings death. The next day, Moses reminded the people of their sin and declared that he would intercede with God on their behalf. This is followed by another remarkable example of intercessory prayer in the Bible. Moses confessed the people's sin and pleaded for their forgiveness. If God refused to forgive them, Moses requested that God destroy him instead of them. He was ready to give his life for this ungrateful, sinful people.